Hey there everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and I'm a resident physician who is also an avid sports fan and in these videos it's my goal to break down prominent sports injuries that we see in the news and present them to you in a way that's easier to understand and more relevant for someone who's not in the medical field but wants to understand better what's going on. For my first video today we're going to be talking all about Markel Fultz and specifically something called thoracic outlet syndrome. Now you've all probably seen the stories lately regarding Markel Fultz in terms of what the heck is going on with his shoulder. We all remember seeing this video and being just completely clueless as to what the heck was going on and why his shooting mechanics were so, so bad. And so recently it was announced by his agents that he was gonna be taking some time off to go see various specialists. And we just recently found out that he has since been diagnosed with something called thoracic outlet syndrome. So what the heck is thoracic outlet syndrome and does it really make sense and fit with what I think is going on with Markel and how can it be understood in a more simple way for those that aren't actually doctors? So first of all, what does it actually mean? Now think about the three different words that make up thoracic outlet syndrome. So thoracic implying it's the thorax of the body or kind of the chest of the body. Outlet meaning the outlet from that area of the body and then syndrome obviously implying some clinical illness or disease pattern. And this is where we're gonna take a little bit of an anatomy lesson. So I'm gonna pull up here to show you all the different anatomy that comes into play with thoracic outlet syndrome and why this is important. Now there's a specific area of interest that is implicated in thoracic outlet syndrome, a bundle of nerves and blood vessels that exit right up about above the collarbone or above the clavicle. The nerve bundle that comes out is part of the brachial plexus, which is the major group of nerves going to the arm and the blood vessel coming through there is going to provide blood flow to the arm. And in thoracic outlet syndrome, it's all about location, location, location. This neurovascular bundle, as it's called, travels between different muscles called the scaling muscles and right above the first rib. And so if you look, you can see this is a very constrained, very tight space. And essentially what's happening in thoracic outlet syndrome is something has caused either the blood vessel or the nerves to, in a sense, get pinched. Now whenever you pinch a blood vessel, think of clamping off a water hose, you reduce the blood flow and so you can have impaired blood flow to, in this case, the arm. And now whenever you clamp off a nerve, you can get a lot of symptoms such as burning, tingling, pain, and of course weakness. Now those nerves traveling through that area are controlling all the function in our arm, so everything like lifting our arm over our head, shooting a basketball in this case is really, really important. Now the exact thing that causes thoracic outlet syndrome is really varied. You can have anything from trauma to congenital abnormalities that cause that space to be narrowed and tightened, but regardless of what's causing it, think of it as the blood vessels and the nerves basically being pinched as they exit the neck and come down into the arm and the shoulder. Now overall, this is a pretty rare thing. It's something that people often suspect or think about, but to have actually confirmed thoracic outlet syndrome is in fact pretty rare. Some of you may recall a famous pitcher for the Mets, Matt Harvey, who had thoracic outlet syndrome and actually had surgery to correct it. So let's talk next about diagnosis and then what you do to manage this. The first thing is clinical suspicion. If a patient or a player is describing symptoms that sound like it could be thoracic outlet syndrome, so that numbness, that pain in the arm, and oftentimes it depends on various activities. If you think about a tight space coming out the neck, if I lift my arm over my head, I'm essentially compressing that space. And so if there's already a susceptibility to make everything tightened and narrow, by doing certain activities, that tightens that space even more. Sometimes people will notice symptoms when their arms are over their head. Sometimes they'll notice symptoms if their head is turned to one side. Anything that structurally seems to narrow that space where the blood vessels and the nerves are traveling. The same way we diagnose a lot of other conditions, we can use different imaging modalities to actually look and see if there's any compression on the blood vessels or the nerves. We can do ultrasound, we can do MRIs, we can do a lot of different things to try and see if there's any actual compression on those structures. One of the actual common causes of this and when people will have surgery is if you have something called a cervical rib. So sometimes people have an extra rib that actually comes out by the neck and that even makes that space even more narrowed. And so the common surgery people will have to get this corrected if conservative management doesn't work is a surgery where they go in and they actually remove that rib to try to open up that space a little bit more. And I believe that's actually what Matt Harvey had done 
whenever he was having thoracic outlet syndrome. So what do we do to treat this? And if you read the headlines, you'll see that for Markel Fultz, what they're basically doing is a time period of conservative management only. And that makes sense in this case. What you try to do first of all is any sort of physical therapy that can help to open up that space where the blood vessels and nerves are traveling in order to make it a lower chance that they get compressed and smashed. So a lot of what they do is working on body positioning and body mechanics so that you aren't rounding your shoulders forward and having this horrible posture that just causes everything to get smashed up. They try to rebalance the muscles, they try to open up that space with different massage techniques to try to just give those nerves and blood vessels some more. Again, this was the first time doing something like this and as you can maybe tell from the video, I love sports, I love watching them and playing them from before and so now that I'm in the medical field and a doctor, it's fun to kind of combine those two interests and do these videos. There's a lot of things I see whenever I follow sports news about injuries and illness that just don't really make sense the way people are describing them. And so I want to try to explain them in a more easy to understand and kind of relevant way through these videos. Let me know below any comments you have either about this injury or what you think is going on, what you don't think is going on. And I hope it was interesting and helpful for you all. Thanks again as always for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.